Hello friends, welcome back to Raju Notes channel, your weekly current affairs update uh, coming to you every Sunday. This uh, week we will do the updates from 30th of April to 7th of May 2022. Uh, let's see what are the events that uh, needs your attention for the upcoming examinations or any other kind of a competitive examination. The Karnataka government said that the week at this weekend that a joint venture between Abu Dhabi based Next Orbit Venture and the Israeli Tau Tower Semiconductor, the International Semiconductor Consortium that is ISMC will invest about $3 billion in the southern state of India that is basically in Karnataka to build India's first chip manufacturing plant. This news come after the Semicon India Conference 2022 ended on May 1st and this began on April 29th with an aim to serve as a springboard for India's aspiration to become the worldwide semiconductor hub and to nurture the chip design and manufacturing ecosystem. The latest announcement by the Karnataka state authorities implies that the government incentive system to turn India into semiconductor hub is starting to bear fruit. According to a tweet from the state uh, investment, the promotion office, the India's first semiconductor fabrication unit is estimated to create more than 1,500 direct jobs and probably around 10,000 indirect, uh, indirect jobs. Uh, we, if we recollect, the American chip giant Intel had recently uh, revealed that it intends to buy the tower semiconductor. So it's a very good step. Uh, India is lagging as far as this uh, manufacturing of semiconductors is concerned. We had uh, recently heard about a lot of chips uh, deficiency and due to which the electronic car makers had to uh, face a lot of problems. So hopefully this will be a good step for the country. This is a news uh, coming from Russia. The Russian President Vladimir Putin might undergo a cancer surgery while temporarily handing over powers to the Secretary of the Country's Security Council, Nikolai Prusovev, and as per an unverified report by the US New York Post. Putin had reportedly been told by the doctors that he must undergo an operation. The uh, New York Post has also cited a telegram channel purportedly you know, run by the former uh, Russian Foreign Intelligence Service uh, Lieutenant General uh, who had confirmed this news. However, the uh, anticipated surgery and the recovery are expected to incapacitate Putin for a short time. So, uh, referring to Putin's supposedly sickly appearance and the uncharacteristically fidgety behavior in public as seen in the recent times, the New York Post report said that the Russian president has been rumored to suffer from cancer and host of other serious maladies, including the Parkinson's disease. However, uh, U.S. officials said that the media reports, uh, media reports could not be verified with Pentagon. So let's see uh, if that is the case, will the Russia-Ukraine war go on to any other direction or will it continue to be so? We will have to wait and watch in this direction. Uh, as per the latest, the UIDAI uh, was replying to a query by the court in connection with a 2018 robbery and a murder case at a jewelry shop in Delhi after the prosecution sought that certain biometric data collected at the site be matched with the Aadhaar database. So in its reply, the UIDA has said that it anyway does not collect biometric information suitable for forensic purposes or if or of any investiga investigating agency and that the use of biometric data for random matching purposes of accused may not be technologically feasible. Well, the technologically, uh, technological architecture of UI DAI or its mandate for Aadhaar based authentication does not allow for any instance of 1 colon N, 1 colon N matching where the fingerprints including the latent and the chance fingerprints are matched against the other fingerprints in the UI DAI database. Except for generation of Aadhaar number where the biometric information has been collected in accordance with the technical laid down procedure as per the reply. So what does it mean? It means that your Aadhaar card uh, biometric details will not 
cannot be used as a proof against you in a court of law as of now that has been cleared by UADI. It's a good thing because, you know, we have heard about uh, the uh, your Aadhaar that details being leaked on internet for a long period of time. So probably this will put that concerns to ease. Well, uh, our next uh, update, footwear is amongst the 1,157 products that India has kept out of from the ambit of the India-UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, CEPA, which came into force on May 1st. Uh, other such products include probably television, picture tubes, soaps, toys, instant coffee, sherbet, and petroleum waxes. No customs duty concession will be offered on these products by India. The product category includes jewelry, plastics, scrape of aluminium, copper, probably most of the automat uh, automotive uh, components, medical devices, dairy products, food, sugar, food preparation, tobacco products, and processed marble. According to a frequently asked questions prepared by the Commerce Ministry on the PAC, the CEPA is likely to benefit about $26 billion worth of Indian products that are subjected to 5% import duty by the United Arab Emirates. The uh, agreement has built-in protection to ensure that no third country product enters the Indian market through the UAE and benefit from concessional traffics without being substantially transformed. So a concept of uh, this re uh, review of the agreement has been put in place to take the stock of the operations of the pact based on the same, the suggestions for the fu future course of action will be taken. So a great thing between uh, uh, two, two nations. And uh, if you recollect the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan in February this year had a virtual um, summit and uh, witnessed the signing of the C EPA by the Indian Commerce and Industry Minister, Mr. Piyush Goel, and the UAE's Economic Minister, Abdullah bin Tauk Al Mari. So that was the news. It good again, a good thing for India. The uh, Indian Computer Emergency Response Team, also called as CRET in. The CRET in under the aegis of Minister of Information and Technology, Government of India, recently made it mandatory for the data centers uh, and the virtual private sector, that is uh, private server, sorry, VPS providers and the VPN providers and the cloud service providers to store the user data for five years. This decision has been taken to identify and close certain gaps that were hindering the process of incident analysis as per the CRIT. So uh, the VPN services provider will have to register the following information which must be maintained by them for about five years or longer as mandated by law. So what are these? They will be uh, validated names of the subscribers or customers hiring the services, period of hire including dates, the uh, IP addresses allotted by uh, the members, email addresses and IP addresses at the time of uh, timestamp used at the time of registration, onboarding, purpose of hiring services, validating address and contact numbers, ownership pattern and the subscribers or the customers hiring service. Well, furthermore, uh, services providers will have to mandatorily report uh, the following incidents to CRET in that is uh, targeted scanning, if any, compromise of critical systems or information, unauthorized access of IT systems or data, defacement of website, uh, malicious code attacks, uh, attacks on servers such as database, mail, DNS servers, etc., identifying theft, spoofing, and phishing attacks, attacks on critical infrastructure. So it's a it's a volley of um, uh, you know services which need to be informed to CRED. So good thing because uh, th somehow uh, we have recently heard as uh, late as uh, yesterday that uh, the Chinese government has banned any other kind of a computer other than the ones which have been manufactured in China. So no HP, no Dell, nothing. Everything 
uh, in china will now be the computers produced in china so a country like china who is proactive as far as the cyber attacks are concerned he is so worried of this cyber attacks that he has passed this order so i think it's high time that indian government also took on to this kind of a thing uh as coming on to the asian games the asian games of 2022 uh, due to be held in hangzhou china in september has been postponed to 2023 due to rise in covid 19 cases in the country the olympic council of asia the governing body of the asian games said that it will announce the new dates for the 19th edition of the games uh, the asian games were originally scheduled from september 10th to september 25th the host city of the hangzhou is less than 200 kilometers away from shanghai which is currently fighting another major covid-19 uh, outbreak and has uh, strict restrictions in the place including weeks long uh, lockdown though the organizers say that all the venues have been constructed and everything is clear but uh, uh, if we recollect the beijing 2022 olympic uh, winter olympics were also uh, held in a very strict bio bubble so all and more so but there were people threatening to boycott this also so china probably as a face saving measure or probably sending out some message has somehow told to cancel this games of uh, asian games of 2022 Next in news, Russia will not use nuclear weapons in Ukraine as per the foreign ministry spokesman Alexei Zetsev, who said this on Friday. Zetsev uh, told reporters that the use of nuclear weapons by Russia is a risk that the Western officials have been publicly discussing and uh, it was not applicable to what Moscow calls its special military operations in Ukraine. So uh, he has uh, Russia has categorically now said that they will they will not use nuclear weapons. Uh, if you recollect, the CIA director William Burns uh, on 14th of April said that given the setbacks Russia had suffered in Ukraine, uh, none of us can take lightly the threats posed by potential resort or to tactical nuclear weapons or low yield nuclear weapons. Unquote. So uh, this to put this concerns to uh, rest. Uh, I think the Russia has now told that it will not use any more nuclear uh, any nuclear weapons but but the nature of war is such that it is uncertain so nothing is uh, certain during war so let's have to just wait and watch on to this particular aspect the jammu kashmir delimitation commission chaired by justice retired ranjana prakash desai on thursday submitted its duly signed final report to the government and subsequently a gazette notification was issued showing the details of the redrawn assembly constituencies in the union territory the delimitation panel also comprising of the chief election commissioner sushil chandra and the state election commissioner of jammu and kashmir as ex officio members completed this exercise in 2 years the panel was set up in march 2020 it was granted one year's extension last year in february and it was given two more months of extension to complete its task and the term was to end on march 6 2022 and according to the notification the commission has suggested increasing the seats from 46 to 47 in the kashmir region while in the jammu region the seats will be increased from 37 to 43 as of now jnk will have 90 assembly constituencies the six new assembly constituencies in the jammu region are being carved from rajori doda udampur kishtwar katua and samba districts the new one uh, seat for the Kashmir Valley has been carved out from the Kupwara district. Uh, just an information that you should be aware of. The IRCTC has uh, now come up with its first Bharat Gaurav train from 2021. And uh, probably I will just take some time for you to tell as to the basically the stops of this train. The Bharat Gaurav train, tourist train, will start on June 21st, which will uh, uh, include a long, I must say, it will run on the Ramayan circuit identified under Swadesh Darshan scheme, covering prominent places associated with life of Rama and uh, Rama Janaki temple at Janakpur located in Nepal. It is an 18 days Bharat Gaurav tourist train 
and it has first stop at Ayodhya, then it will go to Ram Janmabhoomi Temple and Hanuman Temple. Additionally, it will get a halt at Nandigram, dedicated to Lord's uh, younger brother Bharat. After Ayodhya, the next destination is Baksar, where the uh, hermitage of Maharshi Vishwamitra and uh, Ramrekha Ghat will be shown, where people can have holy dip in Ganga. From here, the train will move to Sitamari, the visit of Sita's birthplace by road in uh, Janakpur in Nepal, and tourists can stay there for overnight. And thereafter, it will proceed to the uh, famous uh, Varanasi, while at Kashi, uh, Sita Samahi Stal will be seen Prayagra at Prayagraj, probably thereafter at Chitrakoot by road in the night. And uh, the train uh, will finally, in the next leg, move to Nasik and from there visit the uh, Triambakeshwar Temple at Panchavati. And thereafter, it will go to Kishkinda, Hampi, and overnight stay at the hotels. And thereafter, it will go to Sri Hanuman Temple atop the Anjaneyadri Hills and other heritage sites, uh, religious sites. The final destination will be Rameshwaram, and where the uh, train will, uh, the tour will go on till uh, Ramanatha Swami Temple and the Dhanushkodi covering all these places. So basically, it's a beautiful circuit, in case 18 day circuit. If you wish to go undertake this, I think it's a time. Do Google more on to this. And uh, the, uh, the train is fitted with a well-equipped pantry car for uh, rustling up freshly made vegetarian meals for the tourists, Info uh, infotainment system, CCTV camera, security guard, etc. will be available. Sorry to take a longer thing, but I think it was uh, necessary for me to cover this. Uh, the next news uh, is coming from uh, U.S. U.S. President Joe Biden has announced about $150 million package, weapons package, to help Ukraine fight Russia. And with this, the total uh, U.S. security assistance will now become $3.8 billion uh, since the invasion had started. And, uh, and the new package will include about uh, 25,155 mm RT uh, rounds and jamming equipment uh, from US. So now see, the man on ground is the one who is suffering. Otherwise, the countries are making money. We can see this as, you know, whatever package for Ukraine or whatever it is, Russia or something it is. You see the, the defense industry. Uh, war or anything there the underlying thing is money so whenever there is a war there is the other side of war where people want it to continue people want it to prolong so keep this in your mind whenever there is a debate discussion or interview just keep this aspect back in your mind that war is money and uh, people who make money have no uh, love lost for the life so keep that aspect in money uh, as far as this topic is concerned uh, my uh, and this pur purposefully I put this news. This is for the uh, students taking or the candidates taking the NEET PG 2022 examination. There ha was uh, a fake news claiming that the NEET PG 2022 examination has been postponed to July 9th, and uh, now the center has warned about this n news which has been running around. This is a fake news. Please don't get misled by such uh, notices. And the NEET 2022 examination will be uh, held as per its date, and it will. Uh, don't get. Uh, please prepare your. Keep preparing your uh, 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 preparation for the NEET examination. And uh, we have. I think uh, uh, medical aspirants had urged PM Modi to postpone the examination, probably leading to such kind of a fake news coming in. And uh, but that was not accepted. So please be careful on this particular aspect. Uh, well, from this uh, this uh, update onwards, I am including what is happened, rather what has happened uh, from in, in the same time in the uh, past, in the same week. Like I am covering aspects from 30 April to 7th May. So what happened in during this period uh, back uh, in the history, 30th April of 1993, the WWW was made free for everyone. Uh, around 29 years ago, the Euro European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, released the WWW, that is World Wide Web, software in the public domain. And uh, it was originally conceived and developed to meet the demands for automatic information sharing between the scientists in universities around the world. And Tim Berner-Lee, a British scientist at the CERN, had invented the web in 1989. 
next uh, look into the history on 1st of may the international workers day uh, is observed uh, this day around 130 years uh, 36 years ago that is in 1886 the labor unions in the united states of america they had decided to go on a strike demanding that the workers should not be allowed to work for more than eight hours a day and this was, strike was followed by a bomb blast in chicago and uh, this which galvanized the border labor movement against the capitalism so from the 1st may of 1889 the day is uh, may 1st is celebrated as the international workers day next uh, sneak in the past it is may 2nd of 2000 on this day 22 years ago 19 years after the united states air force conducted developmental flight tests for the two prototype of global positioning system called as gps receivers using the ground based pseudo satellites president bill clinton ordered to end the selective availability of the gps so the gps project was launched in 1973 to overcome the limitations of previous navigation system and this system was developed by the Department of Defense and it, it was originally used, uh, used 24 satellites and became fully functional in 1995. And on May 3rd of uh, 1939, Subhash Chandra Bose formed the forward block. We should know what forward block is. 83 years ago, Subhash Chandra Bose established an All India Forward Block, also called as AIFB, when uh, Mahatma Gandhi ensured that Bose, who had defeated Gandhi's nominee in 1939, was unable to work as a Congress president. So then uh, Subhash Chandra Bose resigned uh, from Congress and founded the AIFB to consolidate the leftist force of India, Indian politics. And uh, unsurprisingly, the joining form was signed with volunteers' blood. So, Bose was, uh, if you recollect, Bose, Tum mujhe khun do, main tumhe azadi dunga. The Bose, the prince amongst the patriots, would fight the tireless for Indians' independence till his death in 1945. Again, a uh, sneak in the past. Uh, May 5th, 1821, Napoleon Bonaparte oh, died on this day as a prisoner, British prisoner on the islands of St. Helena. Napoleon had risen from obscurity to become one of the greatest military generals in, known in the Europe. He marched half a million of men to conquer the entire continent and uh, he dragged the France out of bloody revolution and transformed it into an empire that revealed ancient Rome in glory. So that was that day. On May 6th, uh, the Channel Tunnel connects, uh, connected the United Kingdoms and France. This day, about 28 years ago, the Channel Tunnel, also called as Channel uh, Euro Tunnel, was inaugurated by Queen Elizabeth II and the French President Francois uh, Mitterrand, thus becoming the first and the only fixed transport link between the United Kingdoms and the mainland Europe. Britain thus ceased to be an island nation. The tunnel was first proposal was made in 1802 and it took us almost two centuries for the work to begin. The 51 kilometer long tunnel consists of a 38 kilometer underwater segment. It's a beauty in itself. It's a marvel in itself. Well, uh, that's all gentlemen for this weekend update. I will see you next Sunday with more updates and a sneak peek into the past of that particular week. If you are listening to me for the first time or if you are listening to me every week, I think it is time to click that red uh, small button and help me in reaching out more people. And I thank all my subscribers who had uh, you know, helped me out by subscribing to it. My personal thanks to each one of you. And if at all you have any point to add to my particular uh, updates, please do leave a comment on the comment below. I'll be glad to answer it. And I have been getting some wonderful suggestions and some good uh, updates or rather inputs from uh, our, our uh, subscribers. I am grateful for that. So stay home, stay safe, use mask and keep uh, sanitizing your hands regularly. Take care. Bye bye.